Hello everyone, my name is Nolan Tech and Planes, and uh, I've got most of the electronics and stuff I needed to purchase for the XB70. I have the ESCs, the batteries, a voltage checker meter for the batteries, which is very nice. This is laser cut stuff, I can get that out of the way. Uh, I have the main retract units, not the nose ones though. I have my receiver, I have a uh, 5 amp UBEC. Um, which is going to be powering some of the servos as well as the retract units. I have the retract sequencer, which will allow me to have gear door servos as well as the retract units. Uh, I have five of these Emacs Metal Gear servos, which I will be using for the main controls, which are the rudder, nose wheel, and elevons. And I have these uh, just standard plastic gear, 9 gram servos, that I will be using for the gear doors. So, up until now, I have not had the main component that I need, which is the ducted fans. So in here, if all goes according to plan, is four ducted fans and two counter-rotating blades. And the reason I'm, why I'm using counter-rotation is because I've had bad experience with prop torque in the past, especially on my test model, and I don't want to have to deal with any sort of unnecessary tendency to roll one way or the other, and I just want it to fly straight and true. So that's what we're going to be doing. I'll have to apologize for any unwanted noise. Um, there's people playing with Legos in the other room, and my brothers are having a sleepover today. So, yeah. Side note, I'm still waiting for one order, order from Hobby King, which is notorious, at least shipping from China, for having long shipping times. Uh, the package from the USA warehouse got here just on time. It was great, uh, within a couple days, but the one from China always takes a while. And let's open this up. There we go, there's four ducted fans. And the two counter rotating blades should be right in here. Taking a closer look at the note, it says that the actual housing is actually different than the uh, normal fan. So this normal fan configuration has the, the blades, the jet vanes in here, go a specific direction. And on the reverse housing over here, they actually curve slightly in the other direction. I don't know if you guys can see that. There we go. This one has some mounting hardware. Did I miss a bag in that one? Yes, I did. So there's some mounting hardware here. So I have two fan units there. That's pretty cool. And now, these should be the induction fan units. Um, this also includes bullet connectors, although I don't necessarily need them. I actually might end up using these uh, instead of directly soldering 12 gauge wire. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 fan blades, so it's sure to have that whoosh sound that we all like. And we have another fan unit. So I guess I'll just get this box out of the way and we'll take a closer look. These are Free Wings 12 blade 70 millimeter EDFs. They have a 2850 kV motor and they run on 4S. The total all up weight of the unit is 180 grams. It's rated to put out around 1500 grams at 56 amps. Okay, so I've got my thrust testing rig set up here. Um, the distance from the EDF to this pivot point is 5.5 inches, and then the distance from here to the pivot point is also 5.5 inches, so the thrust should be just a one-to-one one, one one ratio. There should be a one-to-one one ratio between the thrust exhibited up here and then the force exhibited on the plate there. Uh, I've got just a kitchen scale here, and then this is just to weigh it down so it doesn't tilt back like that um, when I'm not thrust testing. These are the two batteries I'll be using. I don't have the XC90 connectors yet, so I'm just sort of plugging these in and hoping they stay in sort of thing. This is an Emac Simon Series 80 amp ESC. Handles 2 to 6S. Uh, it can put out 80 amps. Uh, we're going to be running it on 4S, so that's two 2S batteries in series. Um, and for the record, the battery voltages are 8.25 and 8.24 volts, respectively. So the total is essentially 16.5 volts, if I did the math right. So those two wires are in. Now I'm going to put in the jumper. going to be a spark again. Now, this motor is going to be spinning at roughly 40,000 RPM. I have not balanced this rotor. I probably should have. Um, but they seem to be pretty well balanced from the factory. Uh, but just as a precaution, I'm going to stay out of the disc area of this when it's actually firing. I'm going to be probably back in the corner of my room. 
I'm going to have this camera here set up to monitor the RPMs and such. And I'll turn this on and we'll get ready. Let's sync this up. Okay. So I should have throttle. Okay. Uh, is it going the right direction? Okay, it is turning the right direction. I'm gonna go and stand behind the door here and we'll see how this goes. So that noise you're hearing is actually my jets here is like hitting the wall. It's sort of weird. The ailerons are flapping, so I'm gonna take that down and we're gonna try this again. Okay, I'm going behind the door and let's give this a shot. Okay, well, I barely got to quarter throttle and it started sliding forward there, so that tells me we need lots of more weight down here. So I'm gonna go and see if I can find some weight. Let's be right back. Okay, so here's a five pound weight. Here's another five pound weight. So that should hopefully be enough to keep this thing from sliding forwards. Is this still recording? Yes, okay, we need to turn the scale back on. And let's give this another shot here. So reviewing the footage, we got about 1,600 grams of thrust or thereabouts from this. Yeah, with four of these powering a plane that only weighs like maximum five kilograms, I think this thing is going to have more than enough thrust to take off, and I might even be able to pull a vertical if I really, really wanted to. But yeah, I guess the next thing we have to do is try different exhaust diameters. I designed the geometry of the thrust tubes in... Google SketchUp, and then I imported them to Inkscape, where I then generated the laser G code for them. They are cut out from two sheets of A4 paper that have been taped together at the edges, and that provides enough area for the thrust tube to fit on the paper. Okay, we appear to have had a slight malfunction on the attachment of this, so... Okay, that's on there, good. Let's try this again. When you look at the graphs concerning the thrust versus outlet diameter, you'll notice that there's a spike at around 31 millimeters, and this is because that's, that gives the exit diameter the equivalent fan swept area of the ducted fan unit, which is the area of the fan minus the rotor and motor section. And what that means is that all of the air, or in this case 100% of the fan swept area, is moving through the ducted fan and out the duct, so there's no restriction or overexpansion at the end of the nozzle, which means that you get the most efficient use of the thrust. I'm still trying to figure out how exactly I'm going to wire all the servos. I was originally thinking a 5 amp UBEC would be enough, but when I was testing some of the higher torque Metal Gear servos, they appeared to draw about 1 amp each, and so I don't think I'll be able to use the 5 amp UBEC for those, as well as the retract units in the gear door servos. So as an extra precaution, I'll be running either two or all of the ESCs integrated 5 amp UBEX to power some of the servos. The next video I do will be when the package from Hobby King's China Warehouse gets here, and then I can finally start installing all of the landing gear and stuff in the bottom fuselage, which I will have to build, as well as doing the wiring. And then we'll get to the maiden voyage. If you liked this video, please leave a like. If you disliked it, please leave a comment why so I can improve my content. And I think that should 
finish it all up. I will see you guys in the next build log. Signing out.